Hello, it is Wednesday night, so we've got our Devo tonight, and we are in James chapter 2, and we're going to be finishing up James chapter 2 today, and we're going to tackle um, what's often a, a, a more difficult discussion, I'll say. Um, it's all about um, faith and works, and so let's read from our text. This is starting in James chapter 2, verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. You do, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. You see, what James is saying is it's not good enough to just believe in God. You see, we have to put that belief into action. And a lot of people see this in contrast to what Paul says in Romans chapter 3, when he says in verse 28, For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. And, and you see, there's a couple things going on here. The first is we need to understand who James is and who Paul is and who they are writing to, respectively. Because James, he is writing mainly to Jewish people. And he is writing to them as they are dispersed throughout the Roman Empire. And he is saying that it's not good enough to you know, just say that you believe, but you actually have to do the right thing as well. And as he's writing, he's saying what we mean by that, and he talked about this at the end of um, chapter 1, where he said that religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. He's saying that you have to do the right thing. You can't just sit there and say, I believe. Because doing something is important and acting on what you believe is important. And this is echoed by Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 25. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. The parable of the sheep and the goats or the story of the sheep and the goats. Jesus, he says at the end of time, the king will come and he will separate all nations like a shepherd separating sheep from the goats. And those on the left, he will say, Come, you who are loved by my Father. You gave me drink when I was thirsty. You gave me food when I was hungry. You gave me clothes when I was naked. You visited me when I was sick and when I was in prison. And they respond with, When did we ever do that for you, Jesus? And they said, and he says, Whenever you did it to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. And then he says to the other people, he says, Go away, you who are cursed by my Father. Because you didn't help me, paraphrasing. You didn't help me when I needed help. They say, when did we not minister to you? And Jesus says, when you didn't do it to one of these brothers of mine, you didn't do it for me. So Jesus' own words talk about the importance of our works and the importance of doing what is right. And James has already talked about, we've looked at this in James already, James has talked about how when... Or that we can't just be hearers of the word. We have to be doers of the word as well. So that's who James is talking to. And that's what James is trying to get the point across. Or when you look at Paul, you have to think about who is Paul. 
Well, Paul was, as in his own words, a Pharisee of Pharisees. Well, what we know about the Pharisees is that they were all about doing good works. It didn't really matter where your heart was as long as you did what was right. And James is writing, or Paul, I'm sorry, Paul is writing to people who are similar to that. Remember, the Pharisees were the people who said, if we follow the law of Moses perfectly, it doesn't matter about our heart, but if we follow the law perfectly, then Messiah will come. And so all they cared about was doing the right thing, not where your heart is. And so who Paul is writing to, he is saying, know your heart's what really matters. Is Paul right that we're justified by faith apart from works? Absolutely. Is James right when he says that faith without works is dead? Absolutely. Because they are both important. Paul is emphasizing that we need faith because he's talking to a pretty faithless people. He's talking to people who are all about works. James is emphasizing works because he's talking to a people who they're all about faith, but they don't want to do anything. They don't want to take away from their own time to help other people. That's my time. It's all for me. And so James is saying, no, you know what? You need to do the right thing also. I love what he says. He says, oh, you believe that God is one. Well, good. Even the, demon, even the demons believe that. And they shudder. And so James is saying that we, we still have a responsibility to do the right thing. At the end of chapter 1, he says, visit orphans and widows in their affliction." Here, he brings up a great example. He says, If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things they need for the body, what good is that? How terrible would it be to see someone truly in need and not even be willing to, to help. You see, this is what James is fighting against. He's saying, no, you see someone in need, you need to help. It's not good enough to just say, hey, I'll pray for you. There needs to be action behind our faith. When I was in Texas, we did a thing that we called Faith in Action. And we took our teenagers into downtown Houston and for the first couple years that I was there, we would we'd make sandwiches and get some bottles of water and some bags of chips, and we'd take them into downtown Houston where there was a big homeless population. We would start giving out bags of sandwiches and chips and water to the homeless people, feed the homeless. We were putting our faith into action, and eventually that grew and it changed because we did that the first weekend of December. And it was a good work, don't get me wrong. What we were doing was good, but we started noticing, and this was a lot of the churches from the Houston area, I think there were five churches that participated in this. What we started realizing is that, you know what, this is December and there's a lot of people out here, a lot of church groups giving food to the homeless. And most of the food that's being given out is honestly better than what we're giving out. So we started looking at, okay, well, what do they need? What do these homeless people need? And so eventually we started giving out things like clean socks and blankets, and mittens, and gloves, and, and warm hats. We started giving them things that they would need as the cold season came around. Because, you see, it's not just about doing something that's good. It's also about, let's let's look at what is needed, and, and finding a way that we can help people who are truly in need. You see, this is what James is talking about. Of course, James realizes that faith is important. There's not a single part here in James where James says that faith is not important. And there's not a single time that Paul ever say it says that works are not important. It's just they are emphasizing a different thing because of the audience that they are writing to. Because I think that both Paul and James realize that faith is important, but you know what? 
Sometimes we need to emphasize one thing. It doesn't make the other thing less important. It means that this thing needs to be emphasized right now. James here is talking to a group of people who need to start doing the right thing. And so I challenge you today as we come to the end of our Devo, what is the right thing that you need to be doing right now? Think about what you can do. Maybe it's helping your elderly neighbor. Maybe it's ta taking them groceries, seeing what they need and doing their grocery shopping for them. Maybe it's visiting someone, maybe not in person, maybe over the phone. Who is it that you can call and see how they're doing? Maybe it's helping a stranger on the street. Maybe it's seeing that person with a flat tire on the side of the highway and pulling over just to see if they need any help. Find a way to help someone. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that we can come to you. And God, thank you that you give us the ability to help people. God, please help us never overlook people that are in need. Please help us find ways to show your love. We thank you that you've shown us love first. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.